Hi guys, welcome to my channel, this is Rose. First and foremost, I just want to apologise for any background noise you may hear. It is raining cats and dogs outside, it has been raining for days, and it will continue to rain for days. Welcome to 2020, it's great. Um, but usually I try not to film in the rain because sometimes you can hear that annoying background noise, but I'm having to film at the moment, so if you hear that, that's what it is. And in the most ironic juxtaposition ever, today we're going to be talking about sunscreen. In the pouring rain, my favourite. But it brings me nicely round to my first point, which is you should be wearing SPF all the time, every day, no matter what you're doing. Even if you feel like you're going to be inside most of the day, you need to wear SPF. It is probably the most influential and important thing that you can do to have good skin and maintain good skin. Not wearing sunscreen is like going to Wagamama's and not having the chicken katsu curry. It's like, why bother? That is a very, very niche joke that only British people will get, so I'm so sorry for everybody else. Um, but if you're from England, you know what I mean. You don't go to Wagamama's and get anything other than the chicken katsu curry or the vegan katsu curry, which is equally as good, actually. Anyway, let's move away from Japanese fusion dishes um, and into SPFs. Now, I have certain criteria that I use to define whether a sunscreen is good or not good. So the first criteria is that it's gentle enough for my sensitive skin. The second one is that it's not oily. Third, no white cast. And fourth, actually delivers good protection. And all of the sunscreens that I'm gonna mention in this video are 50 plus, so, Perfect. So I'm gonna run you through all of my favorites and there should be one for every single skin type and every single budget within this selection that I've got, hopefully. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump straight in with this one. You guys already know what it is. You know what it is. Um, it is, of course, Purito Santella Green Safe Sun. Now I have technically the scented version, but I've also used the unscented. I actually prefer the unscented, but I've got this at the moment. I wanted to give it a go. And so it's the one that I have here to show you guys, but either of them are very, very good options. Ooh, that is crazy thunder. I'm not very good with thunder, I have to say. So this is a chemical sunscreen, which means that it sinks into your skin and absorbs UV rays. Physical sunscreens, on the other hand, um, sit on the top layer of your skin and they physically deflect UV rays. So that's how that works. And this is a chemical SPF. So what I love about this sunscreen is that it melts beautifully into the skin. There's absolutely no white cast and it's actually very, very hydrating. It also contains Centella Asiatica, which you guys know I love on this channel. Um, and that's a really calming, soothing ingredient. So if you have irritated skin, or if you have skin issues going on, this is a good one because it's not going to sensitize your skin. So I would definitely recommend this, but particularly the unscented version to all sensitive skin people out there. I got your back. Um, this is the one that I use and I really, really love it. Both the unscented and the scented version retail for about 10 pounds or $13. So pretty um, pr pretty good price point. Um, and also it lasts me about four to five months, bearing in mind that I use quite a lot and I reapply. So you get quite a lot of bang for your buck with this particular product. Moving on to my next sunscreen. This is from COSRX. This is their Snail Essence Sun. And she has undergone somewhat of a makeover recently. She got a new color. She got a little bit of body to her now. The packaging used to be this kind of long, thin tube. And um, it's definitely, different and I actually much prefer this kind of packaging. So it's undergone like a cosmetic change but I don't know whether the formula has actually been revamped. Um, I don't think it has because I've tried both and I couldn't tell the difference but it might have been but I can't tell the difference. So this is a chemical sunscreen and the thing that I have loved about this since I first got it was the texture. It is just so light and it definitely lives up to its kind of essence name and I can absolutely see it as the sister to the very popular essence from Cosmo are actually um, snail mucin power essence. So yeah, it's got this super, super lightweight texture that kind of blends almost seamlessly into the skin and absolutely no white cast. But what's really, really special about this sunscreen, and I mentioned it briefly earlier, is the snail mucin. Now that is 60% snail mucin. So snail mucin is an ingredient that is a great humectant, so it's gonna draw water into the skin, but it's also fantastic for getting rid of hyperpigmentation and scarring. You guys know that I love snail mucin. I have snail mucin essences and moisturizers and serums and masks. I, I love the slime. 
time. So when they came out with this last year, I was so excited to try it and I'm glad I did because it's one of my all time favorite SPFs. I really, really love this. So I would really, really recommend this to people with oily skin or for people who are suffering with acne or have suffered with acne and are trying to get rid of the scarring. Not only is this gonna give you the protection that you need, but also it's gonna complement all of the other products that you're probably using to either get rid of active acne or to get rid of the scarring. It retails for approximately 14 pounds or $20. So you're kind of sliding up the scale there. It's a little bit more expensive than the Purito sunscreen. So my next favorite SPF is this one. This is another very, very famous product. It's by Dear Claire's and it is their Soft Airy UV Essence. As I say, very, very well known, but do I stand by the hype? Do I think that this is great? Yes. I do. I really think that this is a fantastic SPF. Now, probably the biggest selling point for me anyway about this SPF is the texture is so dreamy and the finish is just beautiful. It has this very kind of soft, watery um, texture and it finishes with this kind of like satiny, dewy, beautiful glow. Now, when I said it leaves your skin slightly dewy, I understand that that might scare oily skinned people, um, but I wouldn't worry too much because this isn't oily, this isn't greasy. It's just very, very hydrating. It really balances that line between dewy and greasy really, really elegantly. Like it's, it's, it, it does it very, very well. However, if you have super, super, oily skin or you just prefer a more matte finish, then this one might not be the one for you and you might prefer to go in a different route. Now, I just wanna mention that while I love the finish, it also leaves no white cast. So um, it's accessible to everyone, which is very, very important as we know. So this costs about 15 pounds or $20, but I do have to say that you get almost double the amount of sunscreen in this than you would with the Cosrx, which has a very similar price point. So even though it seems a little bit expensive, you get a lot of product. And I just find that super weird because if I was a betting girl, which I'm not because I'm a good Christian child, and also super broke. But if I was a betting girl, I would say that this would all automatically be more expensive because Cosrx is a very kind of like low end in terms of price point um, brand and Dear Claire's tend to be a little bit more on the expensive side, but not in this case. This is a very, very good sunscreen and much cheaper than the Cosrx Snail Sun Essence. So my next favorite sunscreen is from La Gomme. This is their Celis Sun Gel. And I have to say this product probably has my favorite packaging of all time ever. I'm just completely in love with it. And I know packaging shouldn't matter, but I just like beautiful things. Sue me. Please don't though, because Corona took my job and um, I don't really have the money to be sued right now. So moving on from the packaging, uh, within the packaging is a lovely sunscreen and I particularly like the finish. It's a very mattifying finish, which I think complements makeup very nicely. This is definitely probably the most undetectable sunscreen. There's absolutely no white cast whatsoever. Um, and as I say, it's kind of a matte finish. It's it. it, it blends in very, very nicely with the skin. Now that may be due to the fairly high alcohol content uh, within this sunscreen. Now, usually my skin reacts super, super negatively to alcohol within products, but it hasn't with this. My skin wasn't at all um, inflamed or, or, or damaged by using this sunscreen. Um, usually my skin gets really, really, really red and it definitely tells me if it doesn't like a product, um, but it didn't do it with this one. And I used up, I've used up pretty much the, the whole thing. So what that tells me is that it was probably formulated to reduce uh, oversensitizing the skin. I don't know that for sure. That's just my guess based on experiences with products like this. Having said that, I would definitely recommend this for people with oily skin because what it's gonna do is it's gonna control the sebum in the problem areas and leave you with just like a beautiful matte finish. However, for people with drier skin, this might cause an issue because it might kind of over dry your skin and you could end up with just like flaky skin rather than that nice mattified look that you're going for. Price-wise, it's a little bit on the expensive side. It's 20 to 23 pounds, which translates to 26 to 29 $9. So if you're looking to spend that kind of money, this is a great option, but there definitely are cheaper versions available. One thing I also really, really love about this product is going back to the packaging. It's a very ergonomical design. I, I can carry this around in my handbag very, very easily. And also it's one of the best for reapplication. So it works very, very well with other um, products.
works and you can layer it over over things very very nicely and it doesn't pill so that's kind of how i predominantly use it this is the sunscreen that i take around with me to reapply um that's me walking by the way that's how i walk i'm very elegant at walking but yeah this is a this is a nice sunscreen to be able to take take out and about with you the next sunscreen that i want to talk to you about i actually don't have physically with me to show you because i threw it out because i have the brain of a dodo however i have used this back when in korea it was known as beat the sun in the west it's now known as the beach shield and it is of course by crave beauty. So one of the main ingredients of this sunscreen is of course the beetroot, formerly of Dwight Schrute fame. Fun fact, I am a huge Office fan. I have watched every single season at least three times. I can recite various scenes to you. I am so obsessed with that. Um, so when I first saw that this product was coming out and it, that the main star ingredient was beetroot, I immediately thought of Dwight Schrute and thought he would approve of this. Those are the money beats. So one of the great things about using beetroot within skincare is that it's a fantastic source of antioxidants and also vitamin C, which if you didn't know, is brilliant for getting rid of hyperpigmentation. And I have a lot of hyperpigmentation going on. But what I really, really loved about this sunscreen was just how light it was. Like it genuinely feels like you're not even wearing a sunscreen. It is so, so watery and beautiful. It almost feels like you're just putting on like a very thick serum. That's how light it is. Again, just like the others, there's absolutely no white cast and this brand worked really really hard to test on lots and lots of different uh, skin tones to make sure that it was accessible for everyone which I think is a great thing and something that other brands should look up to and really kind of embrace as the new norm. Skincare should and must be accessible to everybody. To be honest there's not really a specific group of people that I would recommend this sunscreen for. It's a very very universal sunscreen. So price wise it's around £15, $20 um, but the problem is is that you you don't get a huge amount so it's a little bit on the expensive side for how much product you actually get but what I would say is that it's a very good quality product and if you're not quite sure of what your skin type is this is a very good sunscreen because as I say it's probably the most universal that I've mentioned on this um, video so the last sunscreen I'm going to talk about is from Revectin and um, this is their skin essentials aqua soothing UV protector now this is a brand that I've been really looking into a lot recently and I've been using a lot of their stuff all of their products tend to be geared towards sensitive skin people so sensitive skin people unite yay so now this is a physical sunscreen and it's actually the only one that i'm going to include in this video because in general i do not like physical sunscreens so physical sunscreens like this contain zinc oxide and titanium dioxide which sit on the top of the skin and deflect the uv rays so that's how they work however they tend to leave a white cast which is why i don't like physical sunscreens and much prefer chemical sunscreens because you know I really can't afford to look any paler I already look like Casper the Ghost's malnourished cousin so yeah I don't like white casts and they tend to have white casts however I wanted to include this one because in terms of white casts this is the least that I've ever experienced with a physical sunscreen I also wanted to include this because some people just genuinely prefer physical sunscreens and I wanted to give them an option as well now what I love about this is that it's packed full of ingredients that I absolutely adore. Niacinamide, for example, is brilliant for brightening the skin and it also contains Centella Asiatica, which is brilliant for soothing and calming down any irritation in the skin. I also enjoyed the texture and I thought that it was very, very hydrating. However, there was a white cast. If you wear this, you're gonna kind of go up a shade or two. Um, melanated guys and gals, you're definitely gonna look a little bit ashier than before. Also, one thing that I don't like is that right at the bottom of the ingredients list is lavender oil, which I wish it didn't include. Um, a lot of people are sensitive to lavender oil, so just be aware of that. It retails for about 18 pounds or $24, um, but what I would say is that you don't need to use a huge amount. It's, it's very, very blendable and very, very spreadable. Um, um, however, it's kind of in that mid-range section in terms of price. So overall, even though I've said quite a few negatives, that's mostly just because I don't like physical sunscreens. Um, but if you've absolutely got your heart set on using a physical sunscreen, this is a very, very good option. And I did quite like using it. It's quite a pleasant experience. So that, my friends, concludes my rundown of my all-time favorite sunscreens. As I say, super important that you wear sunscreens. Hopefully one of these 
these has piqued your interest and you've uh, heard one that might work well with your skin and your price range, um, let me know in the comments what you think. If you have a favorite sunscreen that I haven't mentioned, I'd love to know. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys this time next week for a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.